What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. The Hawks went into Milwaukee and just kicked the Bucks' ass um, early and often in this game. They doubled Dame on every single ball screen, enforced a lot of turnovers, and got out in transition. The Hawks scored 38 points in transition in this game, which is like insanely good. That's like that 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 that's about as high as you'll see in a, in an individual game. That that they their team speed is what is most impressive post John Collins trade. Slide Jalen Johnson in at the four. Jalen Johnson is just a rangy athlete that can get up and down the floor super quick. Finish at the rim, above the rim, um, in traffic. They are uh, uh, Jalen Johnson by himself has 17 points in transition already this season. That's the 11th most in the entire league so far. Uh, Jalen Johnson also is five for 11 on jump shots and is converting spot up possessions at 1.25 points per possession. You know, it was funny. We talked in the, uh, before the season about whether or not it was going to be Sadiq Bay um, uh, in that starting spot, but Jalen Johnson's doing a really nice job there. And he's making plays on defense. He's got a block and a steal in every single game so far this year. I think as a team, and you saw this, they didn't defend well in their first two games this year, but you kind of saw what they're capable of defensively in this game when they're really aggressive on the perimeter because like they forced a lot of turnovers and got out and running, and they just looked like they had arms everywhere. And that's what can happen with this lineup. When you've got DeJounte Murray, when you've got Jalen Johnson, when you've got DeAndre Hunter, when you've got Sadiq Bey, you've got athletes that can make plays on the perimeter. And so, especially when you partner that with a a pretty solid rim protector in Clint Capella, this team is capable of being much better defensively than they have been. And they have not been good defensively um, in the big picture this season. But in that first half in particular against the Bucs, I thought they were really impressive defensively. And I think that's replicable if they take that on as an identity. And again, like you got to look at it in the big picture too, because offensively, they're not where they need to be, right? right? Like they're 10th in offense, but that's despite both Trey Young and DeJounte Murray playing horribly to start the season. DeJounte Murray's below 40% from the field. Trey Young's below 30% from the field. Trey Young is 7 for 21 on pull-up jump shots and 1 for 11 at the rim. Now, everybody else in the lineup is actually playing really well and making shots. And that's the exciting part in the big picture because if your core guys get going, that's where you can really put together an elite offense. And so I think this Hawks team is capable of being really good. I had them going up a level this year, for those of you guys who remember in the season preview. Um, but it's it, I, the Jalen Johnson thing is something I even missed in my in my preseason prediction and scouting this team. I didn't realize how good he was. And they just have a ton of depth on the wing. And and, and like theoretically, with that spacing, with their shot creators, when they get going, they can be really, really good. On the Bucks front, they look like a team that doesn't even practice. Um, uh, and again, I know they do, but they just look really sloppy on both ends of the floor right now. On offense, they had no idea what to do when Dame was getting trapped. And a lot of it was on Dame. Dame's just not playing well. He was turning it over against the blitz, just throwing it into uh, passing lanes and throwing it, not even getting it over the guy who's blitzing him. And some of that's like not even about the schematic side of things. Like if Dame can't actually get the pass off in a trap, which he's been doing his entire career in Portland, that's obviously going to uh, uh, bite you in the butt before you can even get started, right? So like I- I'm not uh, uh, particularly concerned in the big picture. They're just playing shitty right now on both ends of the floor. Dame is can't hit a shot. He came into camp out of shape, clearly. Uh, is not even getting the ball over the front of the rim on most of these shot attempts. And a lot of their offensive approach just doesn't make any sense. There was a stretch in the first quarter where Giannis took a turnaround fadeaway in the post and missed it right after missing a free throw. And, and he's been shooting free throws like shit so far this season, so his jumper is clearly not there. Then Dame goes down on the very next possession and shoots a pull-up 30-foot three in transition and barely grazes the side of the rim. And then the very next possession, Giannis dribbles up and just takes a three from above the break and misses it, uh, like bricks it. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> like, like, this doesn't have to be that complicated. Just get your four out one in spacing, have Giannis come set a ball screen, and have Dame throw the ball to Giannis, uh, Giannis rolling hard downhill against the Blitz. Like, a lot of this is just they're not, they, they don't look like a team who knows how they want to play right now. 
And then on the defensive end, the rotations have been really shitty so far, which is surprising, especially from the back line guys. Like there were two possessions in the first quarter in particular where Trey Young and DeJounte Murray were able to feed to guys directly under the basket for dunks because Giannis was leaving the paint to rotate somewhere else and no one rotated on Giannis's behalf to the to underneath the basket. Like they just again, we talked about this before the season. I'm a huge believer in the Bucks' ultimate playoff ceiling. But I said, I think they're going to go down a level in the regular season. And I said, don't be surprised if there's a huge gap between them and the Celtics and if they end up being a middle-of-the-pack team in the regular season. And I really do think that's a possible outcome here because they're just really far right now from where they need to be to be a good basketball team. In the big picture, it's going to be fine. There's too much talent there. Chris Middleton missed this game. Chris Middleton uh, uh, obviously improves your ability to play off of Dame double teams. In general, the Dame Giannis pick and roll is going to gain a lot more traction as the season progresses. Dame eventually is going to start making shots. I promise you he will. So like everything's going to be fine, but we can't really judge the Bucks right now because they uh, kind of like I, what I was saying about the Lakers, they're just playing shitty basketball right now. And when a team is playing shitty ba- basketball, try not to overthink it. Try to understand that like we're looking at 30 NBA teams that are all on various levels of progress from like what they what they could be and where they are. And like there are teams like the Nuggets who like know exactly what they are. And they're already playing at their individual ceiling. Like the Nuggets right now are are playing like a championship team, right? And then you've got teams towards the bottom where it's like Bucks still trying to figure out uh, what they want to do, right? The Lakers still playing well below what they're capable of doing. Then you have teams that are kind of like up in the middle right? Like the, the Warriors are kind of one of those teams that like, they look like they're a little further along in where they want to be compared to some other teams around the league, right? Sacramento Kings right now look a little bit further along than some of the other teams and what they want to be. We all are kind of evaluating these teams on this sliding scale, but this top piece here is the only one that really matters, right? Because like this Bucks team right now, if you put them in a, a playoff series against the Miami Heat, they'd probably lose, right? Just like they did last year, but I mean, they'd probably lose if they started a season, even with a series, even with Dame right now. They're just not ready. But we're talking about who's going to be the best basketball team in the middle of April, not in the middle of October. And so I, I, it's not crisis mode, but this team looks really far away. And Bucks fans, be prepared. They could lose a lot of regular season games in the meantime while they're sorting this stuff out. And it could be a little closer to like the Warriors last year where like they're scrounging away at the you know bottom of the playoffs, top of the play-in tournament type of area of the bracket if they're not careful. 